the, Oliver, you work with the sports data and you work with uh, problems in sports. And can you tell us about the utility functions that we can use, for example, to evaluate uh, hockey players or to evaluate teams? Or, what are you looking at? The, like, what do you take as utility function? And is it really important for the end user or not? Like, uh, well, it's one of the things I like about doing reinforcement learning for sports is that the rules give us uh, a ground utility function. So you know you want to win. You know that to win you have to score goals, for example, in hockey. Um, we've also done um, something called inverse reinforcement learning, where we uh, model what particular teams go after. So for example, uh, uh, Guardiola from Barcelona was really keen on having crosses and it was very important for his uh, players to uh, achieve crosses so <clears throat> even though the rules of the game fix uh, what it means to win um, there is other aspects to what teams are after that you can capture um, but uh, and then there's also um, yeah, so there's what co coaches are after. There are some subtle things, for example, um, about risk versus expected outcome. Uh, in reinforcement learning, we tend to look at uh, the mean uh, outcome value. So for example, your chance of scoring a goal. There's lots of studies that say coaches actually are concerned about the variance or the risk. Um, and uh, basically what happens is they don't want to do anything unusual uh, because then if they lose, uh, then their owner and the media will say, oh, you did this unusual thing, look, it didn't work. Even though, you know, on average, you may do better by taking a risk, um, often they try to avoid that. So I think when you're talking to the decision makers, you actually have to understand quite carefully what it is that they're after and what they're trying to achieve. And it may not be um, what you think is the obvious goal. Yeah. Uh, 